Nearly a decade ago, I was working as a nine to five video editor in New York, a far cry from helping people build apps. But I've always been drawn to working with software, even though I'm not a software engineer. So my mind was always thinking about tech, which led me to wanting to build out my own app idea. Like I said, though, I'm not a coder and I didn't have a tech background. So my first instinct was to hire an agency, which at the time seemed like the only option. The problem was after spending over $10,000 on a wireframed prototype, something that didn't even function, I realized that pursuing an app idea wasn't going to be realistic for me unless I found another way. Now, at the time, Bubble wasn't well known and the term no code wasn't even a thing. So when I stumbled across this no code app builder, it was both full of unknowns and what seemed like possibility. So I dove in head first and immediately got hands on, but I didn't know what I didn't know. So I had to go through a lot of trial and error. Looking back, what took me years to learn and build could have been drastically compressed had I known what I know now. And in fact, throughout those years of trial and error, followed by years of building and helping people build countless other apps, we ended up developing our own process to take an app from idea to launch in as compressed of a time frame as possible, while self-building it without tech skills and creating it to be scalable, no less. And in this video, I want to share with you what I've learned, the things that I wish I had known when I was first starting out nearly a decade ago, and the things that we instill in our own clients today. The first thing I would have done differently is spent much more time organizing the data I wanted to work with in a structured way. Your data is such a powerhouse when it comes to building out a functional interactive application and the structure of your data can really make or break how intuitive things are for your users, the logic that you build uh, to execute on actions, how you display things back to your users, the performance of your app overall. You know, you can query your application in many different ways from different angles. Uh, but there's so many different variables that go into it. It is worth spending the time to understand how you want to organize your data. Honestly, if you don't do that, you're going to end up creating a lot of extra work for yourself. You're going to go back and forth many, many more times between design, logic and database uh, because you're going to be figuring things out as you go. And that's just a waste of time. Take a moment to understand what data it is you need to work with in your app understand how to break them up into appropriate tables because you'll be splitting them up into data types, how you want to relate the fields within those tables to each other, right? How do you create relationships between records? Where can you leverage option sets in Bubble whenever you're working with a list of choices, right? You want to help yourself create the most efficient uh, dynamic expressions to retrieve data, to create data, to modify your database as much as possible. Not only is it going to make things more cost effective for you, but you'll genuinely have a better performing app. You'll also have a, an app that's easier to manage and maintain and troubleshoot long term if you spend time organizing it from the start and creating a system for yourself that makes sense. It's logical, right? It's easy to understand. You don't want to overcomplicate it. It can be easy to overcomplicate certain data structures. So take a moment. Don't worry about how pretty your app is going to look yet or just, you know, installing a bunch of plugins or getting too distracted by all of the shiny objects. Your database is really at the heart uh, of your application. So give it the time and energy it deserves. The next thing I would have done differently is spend much less time trying to make the front end designs pixel perfect, especially too soon. Look, I get it. You want your app to look good. It needs to be professional. It needs to make a really good impression. That all, of course, matters. And you will be able to do that. The capability is there. All the tools you need to make that happen are there. But if you dive into this too soon, you are going to create so much extra work for yourself. You're going to be going back and forth between your designs, your data structure, your logic, all of the workflows, much more than you really need. OK, you're going to be making a lot of decisions. You're going to learn a lot as you go, especially in the beginning. Allow yourself to create something that's a little bit looser in terms of the structure of the front end so that everything can kind of come together at the same time. Remember, you know, th these all these all the components in your application work together, the database, the workflows and the design. You know how when you build a piece of furniture and the instructions usually tell you don't tighten all of the screws and bolts until the very end. Keep them loose, right? You want to have them in there to get the thing together. But at the very end is when you lock everything down, tighten it up. Right. That's when you completely stabilize everything. It's kind of the same thing here with your app. You're going to be going back and forth between your data structure, your logic, all the workflows and the front end design. 
The thing that you should really focus on in terms of front end design from the start is your general layout, right? How are you going to position kind of the primary sections of uh, the screens on your page and your menu system? How are you going to navigate users between your pages? It needs to be consistent. It needs to be something that they can learn very quickly, be something that's familiar. They shouldn't have to think about it too hard. Um, and also styles. Right? Styles are a capability that Bubble has in order to help you maintain consistency in all of the appearance properties. So you know you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you need to uh, design a color or a font uh, for your text or buttons. So you wanna take advantage of those things early on. But again, it's, this, it's the foundation you need to focus on first. How are you going to make it so that your page designs are as consistent as possible? I cannot stress enough. That is much more important than, you know, going down this rabbit hole of creating fancy interactions with the front end, um, you know, or, or just getting too pixel perfect in the roundness of the corners and different shades of a specific color. Put it together first so that you have a stable foundation because you will also be focused on your logic and your backend data structure. And once you get to a point where you're no longer making these bigger picture changes, you can start to lock things down and polish things off. The next thing I would have done differently is learn how to monitor my app's performance a lot sooner. This is important. You wanna keep an eye on your app's workload. Just because something works in your app doesn't necessarily mean that it's scalable. Right? What happens when you have many more users on board and with that may come a higher volume of activity? Are you gonna hit a ceiling there with your workload consumption? Go into the metrics area of your bubble editor and take the time to learn how to read those charts. Learn how to find opportunities to optimize. These are not things that are gonna happen right out of the gate for you. You are going to build things inefficiently to start. So learn from those uh, metrics, those insights that Bubble is exposing to you. Understand where the heavier areas of your app is so that moving forward, as you continue to build out all of your logic, you can recognize where you can take a slightly different approach. Consolidate you know, workflows, for example. Uh, query your database in a more efficient way. Maybe introduce a slightly different structure to your database so that you can have more efficient uh, dynamic expressions. There are many different variables that contribute to your app's performance. And that's why those charts are there. They're there to help surface those things that may be sneaking by you. Okay. And the earlier you do this, the earlier you take the time to learn um, how to read those charts and how to find these, um, you know, these opportunities for optimization, the better off you're going to be long term. The last thing you want is to, you know, you're ready to launch. You have a functioning technically application that's ready to go. Uh, only to discover that you've you've overbuilt it, it's bloated, it's wildly inefficient, and things really slow down for you, right? The performance of the app doesn't do well at scale. And then that's just going to force you to go back and rebuild everything. That's the last thing that you want, okay? So take the time to go through and understand how to monitor the performance of your application as soon as possible. Something else I wish I could have done differently from the start is form much better organizational habits when building out an application. Keep in mind, you're essentially the project manager of your bubble app, right? You, of, of course, are the visionary, you're the developer, you're the creative, you're the designer, but you are also a project manager. Bubble is a full stack platform. It has multiple components that are all working together and you need to orchestrate this in a very clean and organized way. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a mess on your hands. It's going to be very cumbersome for you to work through your editor, let alone bringing in other people that may help you in the future, you know, maintain your application. OK, so form these really good organizational habits at the start. Get in the habit of labeling all of the elements that you design in your canvas, using workflow folders, color coding those workflows, creating a very clean and consistent naming scheme for uh, your data types, your fields, your option sets, make things really easy for you to move throughout your editor. And if anybody else is coming in, easy for them as well, right? If there's gonna be a handoff there or you're sharing work, you have to have a lot of consistency in it. Otherwise, if you have a mess on your hands, you're really slowing down your development. Um, not to mention a messy editor can lead to a lot more error on your part. So make sure that you're going through regular housekeeping within your own development, right? This is all backend stuff. This is stuff that uh, could, could in theory affect your users, right? Because you could be missing things if you're not organized, but this is really more a tip for you. 
right? You as the developer moving through the application, putting things together, you're already going through a lot that you're learning for the first time. Don't make it harder on yourself by having a messy space, right? So go through general housekeeping, such as making sure you don't let those issues build up, uh, you know, clean out any pages or elements that you're just not using, uninstall any plugins that you're not using, keep your space lean. I promise it's gonna ensure that you make fewer mistakes and you know, make your own experience building out your app much more pleasant. Now, there is something that I am glad I did from the start, and that is to learn from others. This is something that I continue to do to this day with our own clients, uh, because why wouldn't you, right? This is never gonna work against you, learning from other people's experience, not just your own experience, but everyone else's trial and error and their perspectives and their different approaches to things. You know, when you're building on Bubble, it's a very logic-based system. You do have to think through the puzzle pieces that you're crafting together. And so being exposed to what other people have done to accomplish similar things, it's really gonna you know, expand on your own knowledge base. It's gonna level up your skill set. Uh, and so when everyone is learning from each other, you know, we're all better off because of it. Now, everything I've gone over has one thing in common, structure. No matter how feature rich the Bubble platform is to help you build your functionality, you're going to struggle long term if you lack a stable foundation for your app. Understanding the fundamentals behind proper structure will help you leverage the Bubble platform better. So to take the next steps to do that, head over to our free scalable app workshop, over at coachingnocodeapps.com slash workshop. Head there now to ensure you build the right skills early on and to properly launch and scale your app from there.